Question, can I use duckweed, black soldier fly, eggshells and vinegar and wheat germ to make my own fish food? Woo! The school of aquaponics. You can absolutely use these ingredients to formulate a fish feed. And we're gonna be touching on the duckweed and black soldier fly larvae, um, uh, the research that has been conducted on these two ingredients for fish feed. But the question that you really should be asking is not can you do it, it's should you be doing it? Is it worth doing it? Is it worth formulating your own fish feed and do the benefits of doing it, do they outweigh the cons of doing it? And that's something that you're gonna have to decide, but here we live by a simple fundamental principle, a simple basic equation that allows us to decide if something is worth it or if it's not. And the, the equation is, if the problem is greater than the benefit, don't consider it. So as we go through, we're gonna answer the question of should you be formulating your own feed? It's gonna be based off of this principle when we come to the conclusion at the end. So basically we wanna compare the pros and cons of formulating your own feed versus having an expert or a professional do it for you. And this falls under opportunity cost because there's an alternative way, a manufacturer or a retail store that will provide fish feed for you the fact that if you choose the alternate option and it causes a loss in time or it takes up time or it takes up more resources, that is an opportunity cost. That's a loss. So you have to factor this in when deciding if it's worth it or not. And that's up to you. That's totally subjective and uh, up to you um, when it comes to that decision. So let's get into the research that was conducted on the duckweed as it was used as a protein source as a substitute for fish meal in a research experiment conducted using tilapia. So we're gonna read the abstract to get the main points of the research, and we'll leave a link to the description of the full publication where you can purchase the PDF file. It's around $40, and you can view the entire research that was conducted on the duckweed. So the abstract goes as follows. The use of solar-dried duckweed as a dietary protein component for tilapia reared in glass tanks was evaluated. Six isonitrogenous diets, 30% crude protein, were fed to all male tilapia fingerlings for 56 days. So there were six different uh, formulated feeds that were put together to feed these male tilapias for 56 days. And we're gonna get ready to find out the content makeup of these six feeds in the next sentence. The fish meal protein in the diet was substituted at a rate of 5%, 10%, 20%, 30%, and 100% with duckweed. So five of the formulated feeds substituted fish meal, which is the primary uh, uh, protein source used in a lot of uh, formulated feeds for duckweed in the respective percentages that we see here. A diet without the duckweed served as a control. This is the sixth formulated feed, and this is the control variable. We know already the growth potential if we feed off of um, using the fish meal at this percentage. We know the expected growth, so we're comparing the other feeds to this growth. We wanna see if there's gonna be a significant difference, if it's gonna be the same, or if it's gonna be uh, a less, um, less growth that's gonna be obtained when we switch to protein source. That's what's going on here. Growth performance and nutrient utilization of fish were based on daily weight gain, specific growth rate, feed conversion ratio, protein efficiency ratio, and protein productive value. So this is gonna give quantitative results, quantitative data, that numbers that can show and prove what the results are when you compare the duckweed in comparison to the, uh, the, fish, the fish meal. So what is this telling us? This is telling us that you need to have measurable results that are gonna tell you if the fish is keeping up on pace, if it's having poor growth or substantially good growth or uh, uh, standard growth, you're gonna have something, you're gonna need something to measure it against. Um, that's gonna tell you how well your feed is performing. There were no significant differences in growth performance and nutrient utilization of fish fed on diets containing up to 20% duckweed inclusion and the control. So the feed formulated with 20% protein from the duckweed performed on the equivalent level as the control or the uh, fish feed that had no duckweed and had just fish meal. Here's the kicker, however, Increases in dietary duckweed inclusion resulted in progressively reduced growth performance and nutrient utilization of fish. So as they begin to increase the amount of uh, duckweed percentage inside of the formulated feed, the growth started to become compromised. So 20% was ideal. As you start going up to 30%, it starts to diminish the performance 
of nutrient utilization by the fish. So this is super important to understand for those out there who are trying to whip up together the secret sauce to feed fish and you want to get out there and just formulate your own feed and just put two parts of duckweed mixed with this and mixed with that and without doing any proper research because in theory it sounds good it's all natural all organic yeah we all love the philosophy but in practice the results are totally different which is why it demonstrates the importance of proper research diet without fish meal 100 percent duckweed gave the poorest results. It did what? Gave the poorest results. If you attempt to formulate a feed with 100% duckweed, like I see many people out there doing, trying to say we're gonna just feed the tilapia all duckweed, it's all natural, we can just grow the duckweed here, then you can expect to achieve the poorest result, the absolute poorest results. Remember, this is opportunity cost if you try to go about it this way. In comparison to a formulated feed that we know is gonna work and give optimal growth so if you try to put all duckweed um, in a formulated feed and use that as the protein source you're going to receive uh, 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 horrible results in comparison to what someone would achieve with correctly formulated feed because it takes research and it takes trial and error and it takes a lot of experiments to figure out what the tilapia need or what the trout need or what the catfish need it takes time to figure this out so if you come in with a new formulated um, uh, um, feed that you want to put together, you have to run trials and trials and trials. You have to run them in comparison to feed that we know is going to work. So that's what we're really going up against when trying to do this. The most cost effective diet in terms of cost per unit gain in weight of fish was obtained with 30% duckweed dietary inclusion. The results showed that solar dried up to 30% duckweed dietary inclusion as a replacement for fish meal and practical diets supported fish growth and was cost effective. So a 30% protein supplement of fish meal for duckweed um, presented a kind of a, a, a middle ground for cost production and growth. So it didn't compromise too much of the growth and it didn't cost too much. So this is pretty much the optimal amount of duckweed from this, according to this exper experiment, that you can add to a formulated feed in order to receive um, uh, uh, a reasonable growth and a cost as well. So this is what goes into formulating feeds. So the pro is that they can get this to work. The research shows that this can work and is comparable to the fish meal protein um, inside of the traditional formulated feed. So that is a pro, but what are the cons? The cons is it takes trial and error. It takes a lot of trials to figure this out. It takes research to figure this out. Um, and what does that take? That takes up time. Time is the valuable resource that I tend to care about the most. It's going to take time for you to formulate this thing correctly and to get it to where the fish aren't suffering because of lack of nutrients or too much protein or not enough um, uh, uh, other essential uh, minerals that the, the fish need to develop correctly. It's going to take time. So I'd rather pre I'd prefer to let someone else who gets paid to formulate this together and who's going to get paid to take to, to spend their time researching this and then I just leverage the information and leverage the uh, product and then use that. That's the way I view uh, uh, going out and approaching this situation. So what are, the, what are the other cons? The other cons is that you have to grow the duckweed. Growing duckweed takes time. Harvesting duckweed is additional labor. It's time consuming. Uh, so these are things that you have to look at um, with opportunity costs of having someone else do it and then you just purchasing it. Also, you need a large area to grow a sufficient amount of duckweed because duckweed, it may look like it's a lot, but once it dries out, the weight is really not that much. So you need a large quantity. And I don't know how many fish you plan on raising, but if you plan on raising a lot of fish, it's gonna require a lot of space to have uh, to, to come up with the amount of duckweed needed to feed um, the, uh, a particular amount of fish. So that is something that you definitely have to take into consideration. So another option that you have, if say you don't want to do all the labor, is to buy duckweed. But if you per, if you plan on purchasing duckweed, your costs are going to go up the roof. They're going to fly through the roof. Ten ninety nine for one cup of duckweed? You have to be kidding me. That is not economically feasible. That doesn't make no. That doesn't make sense. To raise, it will cost you a tremendous amount of money just buying duckweed. Um, uh, uh, in order to raise even just a one or two fish, it will cost a lot of money. Um, that is not feasible. You might as well not even grow fish uh, uh, for these type of prices if you want to buy duckweed. So 
Ultimately, if you formulate your own feed using duckweed, it's gonna cost you either time or money. That's what it's gonna cost you in comparison to having a, a, a professional or an expert formulated for you and then you just purchasing that. So it's gonna cost you on that. Now, this is not worth it for me. It's not even anywhere close to being worth it, but your priorities and uh, prerogative may be different than mine. So th that's something you have to take into consideration and you have to decide for yourself. But for me, not even close, not even a discussion. So moving on to the black soldier fly larvae, this has, the discussion has been brought up with this as well, using black soldier fly larvae as a replacement for fish meal because it is gonna be important that we find some protein supplement to replace fish meal in the future because of the overfishing that is taking place is unsustainable in the long run. So all of these substitutes are important for us to try out and to research in order to find alternative ways to uh, raise fish and which in turn provides food for the human population. So with this um, uh, research experiment that was conducted, it was using trout with the black soldier fly larvae as a replacement protein source for fish meal. And it goes as follows. Insect meals as ingredients for animal feeds has been rediscovered recently. The potential of using insect meals to replace fish meal seems to show promising perspectives especially for organic aquaculture feeds. So the scientific community is optimistic about the replacement of larvae for fish meal because the fish meal is unsustainable in the long run. There's too many people on earth. We're harvesting fish at a rate that can't be replenished naturally. So we have to find alternative ways to fix this feed issue or else everyone is going to bite the dust. In the present study, different levels of fish meal replacement, zero, 50, 75%, by using black soldier fly larvae meal had been tested on rainbow trout. So you can see that they're running the experiment very similar to the duckweed experiment. These are running with replacing a certain percentage of the fish meal with the black soldier fly larvae and then keeping a control feed that um, doesn't have any black soldier fly larvae protein inside of it. So we know that that is the standard growth that we are accustomed to and we can compare the, pro uh, the black soldier fly larvae um, a protein feed with that um, control variable. Also growth responses and carcass composition were significantly influenced by the content of black soldier fly meal in the diet with a negative trend from the control to the highest substitution level. Body weight gain, feed conversion ratio, and protein efficiency ratios were comparable among the black soldier fly 50 and the control group. So 50% black soldier fly larvae protein yielded equivalent results as the control group with all fish meal. So these are the results that they concluded. As neither signs of nutrient deficiencies nor are higher mortalities have been observed, it can be concluded that black soldier fly meal can be substitute fish meal up to an extent of 50% in trout feed. So 50% of the fish meal can be replaced with black soldier fly larvae. Um, and uh, equivalent results can be obtained from growth. But you have to understand that this is particularly formulated for trout, the rainbow trout. These results might not be the same if you did this for tilapia. Now, as you continue reading along in this article here, you'll see that the 75% um, uh, black soldier fly larvae replacement yielded the poorest results. So as we continue going up, replacing with the protein, then uh, the efficiency uh, starts to go down, growth starts to go down, all that becomes compromised. So there's still, there's a lot that goes into formulating these feeds. That's the point I really wanna get across. There's a lot to it. You can't just whip something together and just feed it to the fish. Although the fish may grow, you may think that it's growing in comparison to a formulated feed that is already proven, tried and true, it's actually gonna perform a lot worse. So this has to be taken into consideration. A lot of people will whip up these DIY fish foods and feed the fish and they'll see them growing. They're like, wow, they're growing. But that's no different from feeding your kids McDonald's and candy every day. Of course, they're gonna still grow, but are they growing at an optimal rate? Are they growing with the best nutritional value? Are they growing the same rate that they would be growing if they had a well-balanced diet? Absolutely not, not even comparable. It's not even comparable. So it's important to understand this when trying to formulate feed. It's not as simple as just throwing things together and feeding it to the fish. It's a science that goes into it, research that goes into it, testing that goes into it, because you don't wanna just uh, 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 be growing fish in a poor environment. That, th there's no point of doing that if that's what we're gonna be doing, just providing the worst possible 
um, a, a growing environment that we can for fish because we believe in some philosophy or concept of the DIY fish food or whatever it is. My position is to allow the professionals to do it and for them to take care of it and to them to spend their time that they get paid to do for them to formulate feed that we can use to allow our fish to grow in an optimal environment uh, the best that they can and have the best life they can before they go on the barbecue pit. So the pros of putting together your own fish feed is that if it's something that you want to do and you want to work and, and, and uh, uh, try to accomplish, this is something that you're able to do. But I can tell you that it's going to be more than the black soldier fly larvae, duckweed, the wheat germ, and vinegar. It's going to be more than that to formulate a complete diet for optimal growth. So it's going to take more than that. I will tell you that. But if that's something that you're that interested in doing, then you can do it. But I'm telling you, it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of resources to get it formulated correctly in comparison to buying it at a cheap price from someone who we know that is formulated correctly over they spent millions of dollars doing this and it's formulated correctly for this uh, particular species so i'm going with that route over going with the the hard route of doing it myself now if you're thinking of doing this for a commercial operation then i'm going to tell you absolutely don't even put it across your mind it's not even an option I'm not going to sell you a dream and tell you that it's a possibility. It's not because it's going to take more time to grow, harvest, and formulate the feed than it is to raise the fish and vegetables and conduct business. And it's not going to bring you one step closer to becoming an aquaponic god. It's going to bring you one step closer to becoming a feed manufacturer. Woo!